Today, Elon Musk asks who funds the organizations behind the anti-Elon campaign, and we have an answer. Uh, also, left-wing activists are now stalking Supreme Court justices at their homes, and Gavin Newsom finally admits how biology works. We have all that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Hey, welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by the Pat Gray, host of Pat Gray Unleashed, which you can mm -hmm. find on Blaze TV and wherever you get your podcasts. You need to subscribe to Pat Gray if you, in fact, are not up at like 3 a.m., which I'm not. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not 3, but it is 6. And, well, 6 our time. Yes. And I'm up, but I'm not, I have the children. It is not. 3 in Alaska, I believe. Three in a so Maybe for even all earlier. you Alaskans. Yeah. <laughs> um, but thank you for joining us mm -hmm. uh, again, Pat. And we have Rob Eno, also Blaze Media critic Rob Eno, uh, back in studio. Thank you for thank jumping you. in here as well. Um, so, a group of uh, 26 activist organizations, this happened a couple days ago, who and NGOs signed a letter to companies who advertise on Twitter. And basically, they were pressuring them. Uh, they were pressuring Twitter. Uh, they said that they would reconsider their, adver their advertisements on Twitter if Elon Musk makes changes. They said in the letter that Musk will further toxify our information ecosystem and be a direct threat to public safety. And Twitter risks becoming a cesspool of misinformation with your brand attached. So Elon, of course, shared the article. I love Elon Musk on Twitter. He is... He is so weird, but also awesome Great. at the same time. Uh, he responded by tweeting uh, with a, a link to the piece, who funds these organizations that want to control your access to information? Let's investigate. Well, now we know that uh, the signatories are funded by groups and people affiliated with none other than George Soros, uh, Hillary Clinton, and, well, the, the Clintons, Surprise. and Obama. Are, you guys are shocked, aren't Surprise. you? I'm completely shocked. Totally shocked. Uh, this is Accountable Tech. Wow. It is a Washington, D.C.-based group led by a uh, Nicole Gill and Jesse Lyric. Uh, this one is a former policy spokesman for Hillary Clinton's campaign. Nephew of David Axelrod. Mm. Does that ring any bells? Uh, former mm. advisor to senior Barack Obama. And then Media Matters for America, which is just like the... Uh, you want to talk about a cesspool. I think they use the term cesspool uh, mm -hmm. in their letter. You want to talk about a cesspool, look no further than media matters themselves. Uh, European governments are also strongly involved in the backing uh, of the signatories. This is a group called Access Now that is concerned with voter fraud and human rights abuses. And then their largest donor is the Swedish government's development agency, CETA, followed by Soros's Open Society foundations, which, look, I know that open society doesn't mean this, but I just love the irony in having something called open society, mm. but they don't want an open society uh, when it comes to Twitter and the uh, exchange of free ideas and information. I, I, I have a feeling you guys are super shocked to hear that all of this nefarious activity is coming from someone, uh, the likes of George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama. Yeah. I'm also uh, amazed at how many things George Soros has his fingers into. Mm -hmm. I mean, virtually everything, mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. every left-wing cause that you hear about, if you do the investigation, he's probably funding it. Yep. It's like the, he funded a, you know, a lot of the, the BLM rioting. He's funding this. What are they so afraid of, by the way, with Elon Musk? Are, are they that insecure? Are they that fragile? that they can't uphold, they can't stand up to even the least bit of contrasting points of view. It's really shocking how scared they are right now. I mean, they're... Uh, of, of words on a screen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they, they cannot meet us on the battlefield of ideas because they lose every yeah. time. Yeah, and I think, but I think that's the key, Pat. Is that is that the, these people look the idiots on Twitter who are tweeting these stupid things? Uh, they don't understand this, but George Soros and the Clintons and Obama certainly understands this, mm -hmm. that, and that's why they don't even live by it. You've got Obama with his big mm -hmm. mansion uh, over by the ocean, which I, I'm told that all of that land is going to be in the ocean in a matter of years. Why would you spend that money <laughs> yeah. on it? It's almost like you don't actually believe the crap you peddle. 
So it, I guess it makes sense as to why they would, uh, they would be so contrary about that. And the thing I love about Elon is it's not going to work on right, Elon Musk. Right, and right, that's the right. thing that I love. Like, so somebody responding to his tweet said, oh, it's just, it's got to be George Soros. And Elon's response to that tweet was, oh, maybe I'll just give George a call. I mean, he's got these people's mm -hmm. numbers, and mm -hmm. Elon seems like the person, he wins, right? Mm -hmm. He seems like the person mm -hmm. that would call George Soros up and say, why are you attacking me? Why are you doing this? You know that I can make your life a living hell. Mm -hmm. You know that I can destroy your companies mm -hmm. by doing it. And, and the other thing that's really interesting is there was a New York Times piece today where they tried to paint Elon as a racist, all part of the same of media course. campaign, right? Of course. By saying that he grew up in South Africa. So the, the headline makes it look like Elon's a racist, right? Mm -hmm. Because he grew up in racist South Africa. But if you read the story, even they couldn't say that he was a racist. He's like, yeah, he left the country at 17, so he didn't have to join, didn't get forced to join the army to shoot young black children. And he, Jeez. and his, his family was a member of the progressive party that was the anti-apartheid party. And surprisingly, huh. he went to, and this is the great one, surprisingly, he went to a black friend's in 1987, a black friend's funeral, and all of the black people there said, what are you doing here? This is, you, you came? Like, he did these things that were outside, so they can't paint him as that. And I think that they're just gonna keep ratcheting it up, ratcheting it up, and ratcheting it up. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they realize how cheap the media is right now to buy. Mm -hmm. I looked up Gannett when I was thinking about things that Elon could do. Gannett, USA Today, hundreds of media organization, mm -hmm. papers that they own. It has a market cap of 579 million. Elon gets up in the morning and before he gets his coffee, his net worth has changed by 579 million, yeah. mm -hmm. one way or the other, yeah. and does that all day. Right. Right. If they keep pushing Elon, he's gonna keep going. And I also think that Elon's gonna take it and make it a nonprofit and get himself a $49 billion tax write-off mm -hmm. by taking Twitter nonprofit and then they don't have to care about the ads. Yeah. It's yeah. all pretty good for a homeless guy. Right, <laughs> yeah, it the is. guy who has no home. So weird to me. Stays at friends' house. He's well, he's got the one home. He's got the fifty. He's got the uh, the Clayton home or whatever it is at uh, Starbase or whatever the heck. He it lives is on Bar. friends' couches. He has like a right small now. little right. house that, that that SpaceX owns that he lives in. It's, wow. it's just, he is such a couch surfer. person. Yeah, yeah. world's so, richest couch surfer. So interesting though. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, I think that. The left is overreacting to this a little bit. I, he's not going to be like super conservative no. as he runs his company he's because not. he's not super <laughs> conservative. He showed that time that uh, did you see the graph he put out last week on Twitter where in um, I think it was 2007. Yeah, he was a little bit left of center. Yep. And then uh, the lefties were left of that. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't move, yep. but the scale moved. And then he's a little closer to center. And then the third time, like. Today, now he's on the right side with yeah. us, with conservatives, but not. And he's still as far in right. the exact same and he's spot. In the, he hasn't it's moved just at the all. left who has moved. <laughs> he that hasn't moved. Much further. Conservatives haven't moved. It is the Democrats and the left mm -hmm. who have moved and become so extreme. Yeah. The Dave Rubin chart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Actually, I think that I had Dave on my show the on commit. the day that we showed that, and he was like, yeah, that's literally me. <laughs> like, that's actually my entire life story wrapped up in one little meme. Um, yeah, it is. It's fascinating. You know, I read a report that I think the left thought once they published it, it would ruin Elon, where they said, oh, we found out that Elon Musk had a problem when they removed Trump from, from Twitter and banned him. It's like, oh, no. He, yeah, because yeah, free speech. <laughs> right. Ever Be heard of it? Because he was the president of the United States and <laughs> you just disappeared him from the Internet. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think like, is it really uh, just a crazy person who might think that that's wrong? Or is it just a logical person who's not just been indoctrinated with this garbage? Right. It's apps. He, he wants free speech. He wants classical free mm -hmm. speech. He mm -hmm. thinks that more voices are better and that people can police themselves, what a thought. Yeah. But back to the, the them doing stuff and thinking that they can affect him, what are they gonna do, pull the internet away from him so right. Twitter can't be on the internet? He owns the internet. Right. He right. has 20,000 internet satellites circling the globe. <laughs> <laughs> he owns the internet. I love it so much. By the way, I, um, sadly, I, if, for anyone out there who's watching in France, I am no longer allowed. My my Twitter profile, my entire profile does not exist in France. Oh no. They've removed it from Don't say that, Sarah. From that, French Twitter. That's too Twitter. tragic. Why? Yes. Did they, they give you a reason? 
my hate, my hateful speech. Your hate? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. My hateful speech. The rant wow. that I went on. I won't, I don't know what's going to get me kicked off of, of YouTube these days because the other day we had to censor a giant portion of our show. Uh, but I said some thing, I said some basic facts about transgenderism that were not accepted under French, like, hate speech law, I guess. <laughs> so. Does that mean you can't go to France? Are you like, if you showed up at the French... That's a great question. If you went to go to France, bought your ticket, showed up at customs, are they going to put you on the plane back? And, and you're going to have like a Tom Hanks thing where you can't get out of the airport. That's actually a great question. I don't know. I mean, mm. I haven't heard from the French police, so I don't know if I could, you're on a list. I don't know if they call you and tell you you committed a crime. I don't know. But I wouldn't understand them anyway because I don't speak French. Uh, but you know what? I don't want to go to your stupid place, okay? I don't want to yeah. go there. I don't right. want to eat your little teeny tiny portions of French food. Yeah, plus, you know what else is banned in, in France? Deodorant, all right? <laughs> you don't need the smell, you don't, don't need the odor. I smell your stinky BO, <laughs> all right? I'm yeah. gonna stay here in America, right. where we wear deodorant and where we eat giant portions mm -hmm. like Kexi cookies. And we speak right. Yes. We don't speak gibberish like they do over there, <laughs> so. Really though, go Kexi, Kexi, what is it, kexi.com? Kexi.com. Kexi.com mm -hmm. for literally the world's best cookie. I'm including France in that equation, by the way. The world's best cookies. And uh, it's Pat Gray's own company, mm -hmm. so make sure that you go there. Um, all right, let's go ahead and I want to talk about the just the fallout of not even a ruling, but just the report on a, a draft op opinion that's circulating and just the left are, they're continuing to melt down. But first we want to thank our sponsor, our sponsor, I can't speak today, Birch Gold. So uh, look, the Fed is finally realizing the dire straits that our economy is in, thanks to our loose monetary policy. Um, as it turns out, you can't just spend trillions and trillions of dollars uh, every year without any repercussions. And to play catch up, the Fed has been raising rates and plans to uh, seven times this year. Yeah, that's going to be fun. So I'm sure you're already starting to see these ripple effects uh, as people's buying power diminishes. And um, look, here's the thing. If you are not going to invest in something that is way more secure than our economy right now, you're going to be throwing your hard-earned money away. You don't want to wait until that happens. Take some of your profits from the stock market now and solidify them with gold from Birch Gold. Uh, throughout history, gold has maintained its value better than any other investment in the world. I don't want you to lose your hard-earned money. We have invested heavily in gold and silver. I suggest you do the same. You can text Y to 989898. They're going to get you a free zero-obligation info kit on holding gold in a tax-sheltered retirement account. That is the word Y, W-H-Y. Text it to 989898. Well, apparently Don Lemon is still around for the time being over at CNN. I, look, mm. who knows when that could change. Um, I, all of his buddies are just kind of trickling out the door. Um, he, it's, I think we're down to Don and Mrs. Potato Head. Um, so once we, we got, look, I did not have eliminating all of the garbage from CNN on my 2022 bingo card, but if we could get there, that would really, really make up for the last two years of hell that mm -hmm. we've all been through. Uh, but uh, Don Lemon, Look, he, we know he's not very smart, but he just continues to prove it to us. Uh, he knows literally nothing about anything in the entire world. He was on yesterday with a couple of guests, and they were discussing uh, the potential overturning of Roe versus Wade with this draft opinion from SCOTUS. And he was talking about, he's like, uh, why? Why is the Second Amendment so important but not Roe versus Wade. Can, can, can anyone <laughs> explain the difference to me? Here's Don Lemon. That's what the concern is, that, that it's going to, to lead to other things, that it's a slippery slope. Max, why then for conservatives um, is the Second Amendment sacrosanct, but this one is not? The Roe v. Wade. This is one not. is not? The well, that's a good question, Donna. I think you're no, moving into not. a situation this one, what, where amendment? the current very conservative majority Max, on the court is going to tell states <laughs> that they can essentially outlaw abortion, but they cannot do anything about people <laughs> packing guns in the streets. I mean, it's a yes. bizarre situation. It really doesn't no. make a lot of logical sense. Really? It can only really, I think, be understood in terms of conservative ideology, which really seems to be what the conservative majority is, is legislating on. It's not 
Uh, it's not really the mm. law. What they're trying to do is to exactly what they've accused liberals of doing for 50 years, which is to impose their political preferences from the bench. I just like it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a good question, I, Don. Max Boot's not the smartest. The, so, no. Well, because, I mean, it's the, look, it's a very relatively, it's not known, all right? It, it's not known. It's very, it's in very small print in the Constitution. It's way smaller than all of the other amendments, but there is the hidden abortion amendment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's a pretty easy answer to a really dumb question. Uh, let's see. One of them's codified in the Constitution. The other, not mentioned at all in the Constitution. So you're saying that there's a difference there? There's a difference there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A little over 20 amendments in the Constitution and a whole Constitution. Mm-hmm. And it's not there. And it's not like, there. Like, 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 like the word abortion it, is just not there at all. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just, but it's there. It's just the left's mindset. And, and going back to the, the, the Supreme Court thing, mm -hmm. this draft opinion by Alito basically said, we erred in legislating from the bench. Mm -hmm. So we're going to not legislate mm -hmm. from the bench. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that they're legislating from the bench. Mm -hmm. What no. they're doing is they're taking away their legislation, legislating yeah. from the bench, and giving it back to the states. They're returning the, the power to the people. To the people which and to the government. Which is what you want if you love Wait. democracy so much, as, which is what I hear them say. Right. But they don't believe in that. It's the same people that say that Ron DeSantis is a dictator for allowing you not to wear a mask. <laughs> right. And there are people that say this <laughs> right, all the right. time. Yeah. Because they the believe time. that government is the giver of all that is good in their lives. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid to take that power for themselves. People don't want to be free. We think that they did, and that might be like the whole thing that we didn't, well, that yeah, we I mean, got I, wrong I, I during the we, Reagan thing, I but I think people that, don't want to be free. We mm -hmm. learned that in COVID, I think, is that whenever there's any sort of fear, they just expect the government to tell them exactly what to do rather than making their own choices. Um, but I, I just think that it's the rhetoric that's being spewed on CNN, the rhetoric that you're seeing everywhere in mainstream media organizations, uh, the left-leaning ones, which is practically all of them now, uh, is I think what is leading to this next story, which is a left-wing activist group organizing under the moniker Ruth Sent Us, uh, have published the supposed home addresses of, of course, the conservative justices. So Amy Coney Barrett, John Roberts, which it's funny that he's listed in there because I wouldn't even call him a conservative justice. No. Uh, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Clarence Thomas, and Neil Gorsuch. And uh, they said, our 6-3 extremist Supreme Court routinely issues rulings that hurt women, racial minorities, LGBTQ+, and immigrant rights. We must mm. rise up to force accountability using a diversity of tactics. And they say that they will visit their homes on May 11th. So uh, <laughs> I just it's just so crazy to me. I almost picked a different word, but I decided to pick the word that wouldn't have to be bleeped out. It's crazy to me that these people have the audacity to call this extremist. If, if it ends up mm -hmm. happening, right? We don't even know that it's even happened. Yeah. They're acting as if it's happened. It hasn't. But it's like returning the power to the people and letting it be a state issue is extremist in what world? In no world, of course, <laughs> is the answer to that. Uh, it, it's amazing to me that uh, we're even talking about this as much as we are because this thing is not decided yet. Right. Anything can happen between now and the time they officially um, make this ruling. Which is, of Just course, why they leaked it. Like right. with Obamacare. They, yeah. It wasn't leaked, but it was clear afterward that John Roberts was on the side of declaring it unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. By the time they did make the judgment, mm -hmm. he was on board. Mm -hmm. And he cares so much about his legacy and not being perceived as a right-wing justice, chief justice, yeah. that who knows what he'll do. But as it sits, sits right now, it looks like it'd be 5-4 anyway, right. and it wouldn't matter that yeah. much. Unless he pressured Kavanaugh, Unless guess, somebody else caves. I'm not and that super, could happen. Yeah, I'm not super confident. I don't, yeah. I don't know won't. if they could. I mean, obviously, they're showing up their house and threatening violence, because that's what mm -hmm. they're doing. The right. diversity of tactics yeah. is we're mm -hmm. threatening violence, right? Mm -hmm. Which is Stop what they do. The home all, which is what they do all the time. It's like the January sixth thing was like I can't believe that people broke into the Congress and screamed in the halls and did all the things. Have you been to a state house when there is a 
topic that the left doesn't like. Yeah. It is people that flood it and scream and mm -hmm. bang on the doors of the chamber. That's what they do. These are their tactics, mm -hmm. right? You have the, the mayor of Boston, Michelle Wu, if you remember a few months ago, saying, oh, we've got to change the laws so you can't go in front of elected officials' yeah. homes. I bet you she's 100% behind this because it's not her house. Well, it's like you can't you can't stand outside an elected official's home, but you can burn down private businesses. Yeah. Right. That have nothing to do with this. Right, right. Okay, doesn't make yeah, this is, quite they, as much sense They to want me. violence. They are about violence. It is going to be, they really this are. whole weekend, and then May 14th, there's a woman's march in D.C. Oh, It's going to be, well, I, how do you say woman's march, though? I mean, how isn't it transphobic calling it a woman's well, march? Well, I'm Unless glad you, I'm, yeah. it's true, I'm glad that you guys brought that up, because I, it's, look, I'm just very confused, because I've been told for the last, what, two years at least, that men can get pregnant. Mm-hmm. And this whole conversation, mm -hmm. it seems to be, and I was, I was even told I would point out biological facts, and I was told I was wrong. Science is actually on the side of the people who say men can get pregnant. And I was like, okay, mm. I guess maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but now they seem to be backing off of that because we saw Gavin Newsom's tweet the other day that said, if men could get pregnant, this wouldn't even be a conversation. Uh, we will fight to the, for the right to choose. Okay, wait a second. You guys just told me that men could get pregnant. It's almost as if you guys are using these talking points that you don't actually believe in and just <laughs> switch them around almost. whenever they benefit you. But you, I mean, not quite. No, right? we, I wouldn't. They would never yeah. do that. That's dis and malinformation <laughs> from you. <laughs> yeah, right. that's yeah, I mean, true. I can't believe that you're spreading this disinformation. Well, I can't believe that Gavin Newsom <laughs> is such a transphobe. It's absolutely an, it's insane. What a bastard. It's if insane. Bastard. But I'm pregnant. just glad that finally, after 49 years of the Roe v. Wade debate, Pat and I get a voice. <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally. Finally. Well, men can, well, you can get pregnant at any time, so. The, the other thing that's interesting about all these threatened, uh, violent riots and protests is, um, are these white supremacists that are hitting the streets or going to hit the streets when Roe v. Wade does officially get overturned? Because I thought they were the biggest danger in this country, the most violent group there was. Mm. And then suddenly we, we look back in time and we see, in this case, it's left wing. In the BLM summer of violence, it was left wing. Uh, in the 60s, it was all left wing stuff. I, the right never does this stuff. Yeah, but what about the grandmas who walked calmly into the Capitol waving their American flags? They did parade. Yeah. They, they paraded. They, they paraded, paraded really hard. Uh, yeah, they did. <laughs> they, they, they obstructed a government proceeding, is I think what they're mm -hmm. all getting charged with, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But but it's, it's amazing. We bring up the... Um, we bring up what you were just talking about, and it's the people that, that say their voices. Oh, I was thinking the white supremacists. So a lot of white supremacists, because of, you know, eugenics and yeah. Margaret Sanger, the white supremacist that she was, yes. Um, yes. are very pro-abortion. So mm -hmm. I am waiting for the Richard Spencers of the world to come out and celebrate the Roe v. Wade decision and say that it was awful that the Supreme Court took it away and that he stands with the women of America so that they can abort black babies. I am because he's going to say it because that's what he does. Um, all right. I want to uh, let's get to there's breaking news today about who is going to replace our beloved poor man's peppermint patty, Jen Psaki. Uh, first, we want to thank our sponsor, Freedom Project Academy. Look, uh, if you watch this program, you are no stranger to all of the examples. There are countless examples mm. of how radical leftists have been destroying American schools. We hear about it every day. Uh, it's not just that when your kid goes, they're not even, they have horrible levels in like math and reading and everything else. It's just on top of that, there are these radical left-leaning teachers who go to these liberal universities uh, who are forcing gender indoctrination in kindergarten, and they're teaching lessons on white guilt. They're teaching your children to feel guilty that they're racist and pushing critical race theory in the classroom. Uh, since COVID, a bunch of parents have actually seen all of these sexually explicit books uh, that are popping up in libraries, that are popping up in uh, school projects, and school boards, of course, have done nothing. So if you want your kid to get an education that doesn't involve all of that crap, you got to check out Freedom Project Academy. Uh, Freedom Project Academy, they were doing online learning way before COVID, so they have perfected that over the course of a decade. They're built on Judeo-Christian values and classical curriculum, and they are going to teach them mastery of subject matter, not propaganda. you got to go to freedomforschool.com. Request your free informa 
your free information packet today. Guys, it, it, look, get your kid out of public school, please. If Eric July were here, he would say, get your kid the hell out of public school. You got to go there. Do it for your kid. It is freedomforschool.com. Uh, Joe Biden has named Corrine Jean-Pierre as his second White House press secretary, replacing Jen Psaki mm. later this month. She has been uh, the deputy press secretary since the start of the administration. So, um, but because we know that the left only deals in like intersectionality terms, they did point out that she will be the first black press secretary in White House history, the first black female, and the first openly gay person in oh. this particular role. Good. So, uh, is, she about also the first, is she also the first Haitian? Haitian American with the name of Jean Pierre? Probably. And we didn't get the trans checked off too? Well, it's because the Biden administration oh, is transphobic. The haters. They're transphobic. Why are they not inclusive? I know. It's, it, wow. <laughs> um, also, the first black female is interesting because I'm told that they don't seem to know what females are. Oh, wait, now they do because they're fighting against <laughs> uh, the right for females to kill their own children. Huh, interesting. Huh. Uh, I, I want to play, I think we played this on the program, the initial comment that, you know, Joe Biden a couple days ago after this draft opinion started circulating, started talking about how uh, because of this, if Roe v. Wade is overturned, that LGBT kids are going to be kicked out of classrooms and not allowed mm -hmm. to go to school. And everyone was like, how do you work that one out? Uh, well, she was asked about that, Jen Psaki. She was asked about that by uh, Peter Ducey over at Fox News. Here's that exchange. The president said today, what happens if you have states change the law saying that children who are LGBTQ can't be in classrooms with other children? What is he talking about? <laughs> well, I think, Peter, we've seen um, extreme laws that target uh, LGBTQ families, their kids across the country. And I think Name what he's them. saying is we don't know what they're capable of, given what they've already done to which, date. Which but state is trying to segregate LGBTQ <laughs> children in the classroom? Look at her I smile. think we've seen laws that are incredibly discriminatory. That's what the president's referring no, to. And it. the fact that uh, he doesn't know what additional steps could be taken by extreme wings mm. of the party that would rather divide uh, rather than work on issues that the American people actually are focused on and actually impacting them. Oh, that is so cute. Rather than focus on the issues that actually are impacting Americans, you mean like inflation? Mm. You mean like high mm -hmm. gas prices? You mean like literally every single American has to spend way more at the grocery store now and the Biden administration isn't doing jack crap about any of that. But she's going to stand up there and preach to everyone about how it's the Republicans that are divisive and it's the Biden administration that are focusing on what is impacting real Americans. Yeah, because real Americans, Pat are really concerned about transgender kids being kicked out of schools <laughs> yeah, they are. and whether or not they can get their 20th abortion. Yeah, these people are simply evil. <laughs> They're just flat out evil. There, there's no reason to bring this LGBTQ stuff into this argument. There's no uh, logic in it. It doesn't make any, any sense at all, but they'll say and do anything to demonize the right mm -hmm. and all of their political opponents because they... They can't use logic, they can't use reason, and they can't be truthful about things. So all they do is continue to spew these ugly, ugly lies. Like, who is ever calling for what state? They should really hold her feet to the fire and every day ask her, what state is it mm -hmm. uh, that is doing extreme laws against, you know, she's talking about Florida, yes. which does nothing of the kind. Right, right. It's not and discriminatory. We've been over that so many times, it's, it's silly to even bring it up, but that's what she's talking about. Yeah. And it, can't let it go. It doesn't hurt LGBTQ kids at all. No, you, you can't. You do. You, like part of me. I mean, I don't feel sorry for her, but for maybe a fleeting second, I'm like, I mean, would that not suck? Would that not be the worst job it's in the hard, world yeah. to have oh, to yeah. de to have to mm -hmm. defend yeah. all of these insane, dementia-ridden like comments that the president is making? You ha yes. like, I have to imagine that it really is stressful. Yeah, but the problem is she believes exactly what she's saying. You think? Absolutely, one hundred percent. From the wing of the party she comes from, and yeah. you'll see it. You'll see it full flag on MSNBC when she's on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. She believes it. What what they think and what Joe and his weird brain was trying to say is they think that the, the the ruling as written takes away the quote unquote right to privacy that Roe v. Wade said was in the Constitution and that all of these other rulings like Obergefell for gay marriage and a bunch of other rulings 
are right. built upon the right to privacy. Right. And that's what they're saying is the reason they did this is they really don't care about the babies. They don't care about the babies at all. They just want to hurt people. So the reason that, that Scalia is doing this is to get rid of this so they can get rid of all the other protections that we fought so hard for the court to oh, yeah. give us. Oh, legislate. I thought yeah. we went so far the legislating yeah. next. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, did, did you guys see Eric Swalwell's bizarre tweet that he was like, do, do you want uh, them to ban interracial marriage next? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't? All right, well, come here and donate and get active because that's what's going to happen next. I'm like, all right, I don't, well, look. Uh, I yeah. feel like that's a common core uh, education because I'm I'm doing the math here and I don't <sighs> see how you're getting from point A over here to point Z, uh, the, that's just not aligning. Clarence Thomas is not going to make his <laughs> marriage to Ginny, who I know, unconstitutional or well, illegal. Like, like Clarence Thomas is married to a white woman. Okay, but but can I but can I just also add to that? Like, but also that's literally not, not a Republican happen. platform yeah, at exactly. all. Yeah, so right. I think yeah. that oh, maybe I like let's right. focus on I, that too. Yeah. Because he's not just saying the Supreme Court, he's saying the Republicans. Right. He's saying the Republicans, here's the tweet, the Republicans won't stop with banning abortion. They want to ban interracial marriage. Do you want to save that? Well, then you should probably vote. And for the millionth time, if they do officially overturn Roe, that doesn't ban it's abortion. Not banning abortion. They know it. Yeah. They know it, but they keep saying the lie right. over and over and it over bans and over. It in certain states, but it doesn't ban well, in the country. Well, no, it, that would be the states yeah. right, exactly, making yeah. their own laws. No, decisions, right. Yeah, so, we can't have that. No. Right? Well, only when you are you want a democracy where you want to do things like legalize gay marriage and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, legalize drugs and all of those things. Then states' rights is really, really convenient really for important. them. Really important, yeah. But otherwise, no. Um, all right. So let me get to let me play really quickly. Uh, we, we talked earlier in the program about George Soros and uh, Hillary Clinton and Obama and all of the usual suspects. But who we didn't mention was Bill Gates. So let's go ahead and talk about him. He was uh, he was in the news recently. Uh, this was PBS where he was praising Australia's covid response. Watch. You have this new book out, How to Prevent the Next Pandemic. And it begins by saying, hey, we got to learn the lessons from this past pandemic. Let me ask you about a specific lesson. What did we learn from the countries that actually handled this well? Well, there were, weren't many countries, but a few <laughs> responded very quickly to scale up the level of diagnostics. And then they had quarantine policies that were well adhered to. So Australia stands out. Um, and their death rate sure is does. about 10 percent of other rich countries. So pretty dramatic benefit. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. They also I happen to be recall... isolated or away from the rest of the world. Right. They're an island. Or, uh, it's yeah. an island. Are you saying literally. that are you yeah. saying that there's geographical context there yeah. that should matter? Is yeah, that what the, you're saying? It might have something to do with it. Hmm. Also, they went way overboard and everybody knows it. They were draconian in their response. I mean, they were harassing pastors and uh, not allowing you to leave your city, your area. In April of 2020, and this is one of the early COVID things that just always sticks with me, there was a guy self-isolating by himself in a campsite on the ocean in <laughs> Australia, and the Australian <laughs> Coast Guard flew a helicopter with a speaker and told him that he was breaking the law by being outside of his house. He was by himself on the side of the ocean with fresh air and sunlight uh, as far away and from no anybody around. as right. he could be. Yeah. Well, And they sent a helicopter. Well, okay, so to be fair, something similar happened in the United States when, remember, it was in California with that surfer? He was oh, surfing, yeah. literally out Nobody surfing else was the ocean him. by himself, the only one on the beach, and the, the police had to come and, and like arrest him. Yeah. Which really, if you think about it, doesn't make any sense because if COVID was that deadly, why would the police risk their lives to go tackle, to go get a man who was just in the ocean by himself? Or the, or the guy that was playing catch with his daughter alone yeah. in yeah. the United States. But it, the, the Australian policies were draconian. Yeah. As you said, they were fascistic. They were just... And when they opened up and they started letting people come because they didn't have natural immunity, they all got COVID. Right. They were China light. Yeah. And not much lighter yeah. than China, as it's a matter true. of fact. Maybe about, I don't know, 5% uh, lighter is all because 
you know, China does these, I mean, there were welding people into their homes at the beginning of this thing for a while. Uh, they've been awful. And now they've got this, what do they call them? The whites, the white squad, where they go oh, out, yeah. where the, the Chinese officials go out in the white the hazmat suits. Yeah. suits. I, Australia was not far from that. No, they really weren't. You saw they pulled a, like a 90-year-old guy or something out while he was alive and put him in a body bag. Those white things right. running through China. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, insane. But that's what Bill Gates wants for all of us as he continues to buy up all of the farmland and uh, participate in all of these vaccine conversations and, and all of that. Um, all right, no, but nothing to see here. I'm sure it's just total and complete coincidence. Uh, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Bambi. So when you are running a small business, every dollar counts. Give your team the HR support they need at a price you'll love with Bambi. Bambi is an HR platform built for businesses like yours, so you can automate the most important HR practices and get your own dedicated HR manager. First, Bambi's HR autopilot automates your core policies, workplace training, and employee feedback. Then your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guide you to compliance available by phone, email, or real-time chat. An in-house HR manager can cost up to $80,000 a year, but with Bambi, your dedicated HR manager starts at just $99 a month. No hidden fees. You can cancel anytime. Uh, my favorite feature about Bambi is the amount of money that you will be saving. Bambi has received thousands of five-star reviews on Trustpilot, and their customers are four times less likely to have a claim filed against them. You run your business. Let Bambi run your HR. You can go to Bambi.com slash matters for your free HR audit. That is B-A-M-B-E-E dot -E com slash matters. The folks over uh, on the left, specifically CNN, I think panicking a little bit for Democrats. Uh, they CNN over there, they gave a surprisingly harsh analysis of the CNN, the latest CNN poll, mm -hmm. which showed Joe Biden and his party underwater on a ton of significant issues. Uh, they also acknowledged that Biden is near, quote, the point of no return with Americans on the economy, uh, end quote, and dangerously close to an irreversible severing of public confidence in his capacity to deliver prosperity and financial security. Um, I mean, very strong language from CNN. Uh, the poll also showed that a majority of American adults believe the president's policies have hurt the economy, and 8 in 10 said the government isn't doing enough to combat inflation, uh, so I just want to, you know, it's interesting because if you are reading CNN, which is in the bag for Joe Biden and the Democrats, you're getting a very different uh, view than if you're listening to even Joe Biden himself, who just recently the other day said this. Let me remind you again, I reduced the federal deficit. All the talk about the deficit from my Republican friends, I love it. I've reduced it $350 billion in my first year in office. And we're on track to reduce it by the end of September by another $1,500,000,000. The largest drop ever. I don't want to hear Republicans talk about deficits and their ultra mega agenda. Oh. I want to hear about fairness. He doesn't want to hear I want to hear about decency. I want to hear about help on ordinary people. What? It's almost as if there was a global pandemic that they used to really? shut down the country it's almost hmm. and, and, and dramatically increase spending among levels that it's never been in the history of the republic. That would never happen. And that stopped, so now they're not spending it on there. And it was all Joe Biden. That would never happen. Mm -hmm. that, and, and by the way, uh, the chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, just came out the other day and said that the economy is doing, he said the economy is doing fairly well, uh, and I predict the growth will be solid for this year. It's like, are you guys, are you, are you hearing yourself? Do you, are you, do you think that Americans who, again, are spending more at the pump, are spending more at the grocery store, are spending more on the things that they have to have so we know that they're feeling it, do you really think that Americans are going to buy any of this crap? Having a crotchety old man with dementia is really not ideal for really? the U.S. presidency. Really? And look how angry he is. You can tell he's just burning with rage. Because people are upset with the job he's done. And he doesn't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it anymore <laughs> about any of this stuff. You're going to be sent to bed without your dessert. <laughs> Where's my pudding? <laughs> my pudding ready? Yeah. He's, I, I dislike this guy with all the intensity of a trillion white hot burning suns. I don't hate him. 
because that would be wrong. I just dislike him a lot. And every time I see him pointing, accusing the right of being, you know, horrible people, demonizing everybody, and 70, as uh, Rob said a while ago off the air, 70 million people voted for Donald Trump. And you're just going to lump them all together into this MAGA declaration that they're all extremists and you can't relate to them? Yeah. I'll keep doing it because yeah. November's coming soon. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yeah, the ultra MAGA agenda is what they're calling it now. And in Let a, it go. Yeah, well, I know. And it's like uh, just the other day when he was talking about the... I think we played it on the program yesterday when he said the the MAGA extremists like they're clear they are clearly trying to intertwine uh, the MAGA mm -hmm. crowd name everything about it as total extremists. Yeah, because they don't divide the country. You're right. <laughs> they're, they're unifying because, us. Right, why? Right. Why are the Republicans Jeez. focused on divisive issues like kicking LGBTQIA question mark Z kids out of school? <laughs> Right. Why? To divide the country. Why are they when so focused When we just want to bring the country together, <laughs> as long as the 70 million people that voted for Donald Trump aren't part of the conversation. Well, right. Or as long as they shut up and come over to what, whatever it is that we're doing, it's just mm. also laughable coming from a, an administration who just tried to shove a vaccine mandate down everyone's throats and mm -hmm. for, like forcibly get them jabbed and make their employers uh, take the brunt of that. And they're like, I don't know why anyone would be so divisive. We're not divisive. <laughs> Remember, it's, it's not just take the jab. It's taking synthetic genetic mRNA material. That's mRNA is a genetic material, YouTube fact checkers. He's just and really putting trying to get it, me kicked off YouTube. No, no, and put it into their bodies. Like, to take a strand of genetic, synthetic genetic material and put it in your body. And it's really and not just even trust a vaccine. Them to like, right, yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. Right, which is why I tr I tried, I'm trying to rephrase it and keep calling it the jab and other things because, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I just come in and I do yeah, I look, if, well, I was going to say YouTube, if you're not seeing this, it's his fault. But if you're not seeing this, then you won't hear me say that. So that was pretty dumb. Uh, all right, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Oh, God. It is Cinco de Mayo, which, of course, you guys know is a holiday uh, for my people. And I just feel like we need to just revisit one of the greatest tweets in the entire world, which was Donald Trump six years ago uh, tweeting about Cinco de Mayo. Happy Cinco de Mayo. The best taco bowls are made in Trump Tower Grill. I love Hispanics with an exclamation <laughs> point, which just rounds it off. That sings Donald is. Trump, doesn't it? It's so it great. is so awesome. It, <laughs> it is. Yeah. I, you know, it's just like that's the kind of content that I miss from Donald mm -hmm. Trump on Twitter. Doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's like, of course, the left freaked out about it and melted down because he said, "I love Hispanics," <laughs> and the best taco bowls are made in Trump Tower Grill. But it's so funny, and we're missing that. Hopefully, Elon will do us a solid and get him back on. Like, look at, he's giving the thumbs up while eating the taco bowl, <laughs> which I really want to know, did he actually eat that or did oh, he no, just he take the picture? Oh, no, he's a junk food aficionado. He, like, like him giving, remember when he had the football team it's and he salad. gave them all, he gave them all McDonald's and yeah, everyone was like. that's a salad from yeah. Trump, Trump Tower Grill. Do you think Trump Tower Grill sells junk food? No, How surely dare? not. How <laughs> dare you? Oh, like I literally every other restaurant in the entire thing. United States. Uh, all right, so happy Cinco de Mayo, but don't celebrate it because you would be culturally appropriating uh, yeah. my culture. So make sure that you don't go out and have a margarita. Uh, make sure that you have four instead. All right, thank you, Pat Gray, host of Pat yes. Gray Unleashed, for joining us. And also, Robino, Blaze Media critic, Robino, thank you guys for joining us. See you tomorrow.